It almost cost us everything. It took a miracle to save us. The awakening of the Traveler. This is our new beginning. The maps are blank. The rules are gone. All we know is we must become more than what we were. This small corner of the cosmos is the only place that is forever ours. And the universe watches us with envious eyes. We've proven we can fight threats from beyond the stars. But now there are things stirring beneath our feet, provoked by the Traveler's light. Our war is just beginning. Hello and welcome back to First Prospect Plays Destiny 2 The Road to Forsaken. We are starting the Curse of Osiris campaign today. As you guys saw from that wonderful little intro that Ikora gave us. And we're about to get a little taste of something real delicious. A look into the Vault of Glass. Roughs, killer robots, people in mortal danger. Seriously, aren't you tired of this? Fatigue is a distraction from our purpose. As are complaints. Oh, I haven't begun to complain yet. Ouch! Ugh. Now I'm complaining. Focus, Sagira. Reach for the sky, big guy. Sagira is what ghosts should have been. Again? I've got it, thank you. Well, Osiris. What, what did you see? Slow down. Wait, I thought I... that even with all of reality to explore, you keep picking the places where they shoot at us. We can't stay here. If the Vex succeed, it's the end of everything. Sagira, we can see your light. You have to go. Nope, not leaving you. Without me, there's no coming back. If I don't stop the Vex, there won't be anything to come back to. I'm doing this for the both of us. Don't you even... <laughs> Never a good thing when a ghost gets damaged. Ghosts are the only way a guardian can come back. I don't remember Warmind doing like the expansion 2 thing. I'll have to look for that when we play through that. Well, anyway, it has been some time. I took a... Uh, I took a day off of recording videos to just let the last one sit since we had finished the campaign. It was a bit of a longer episode, too. But uh, we are back, and actually today is the day the Solstice of Heroes event drops. So I'm trying to get through Curse of Osiris before that happens, maybe even Warmind. We'll see how quickly I can record these missions. Curse of Osiris is a good six, seven missions long, I think. It's pretty intense. Guardian, thank you for coming. There's been a development on Mercury. Strange reports from the cultists clinging to what's left of the planet. 
Normally, I'd ignore their conspiracy theories. But one of my hidden brought me. This. A dead ghost? She's not dead. Her name is Sagira. She's not far from dead. For a very long time. And her guardian. Osiris. The Osiris? The most powerful guardian ever. The hero of six fronts. The Zavala before Zavala? Zavala wouldn't like to hear you call him that. Most guardians won't even speak Osiris's name. He was the only vanguard commander ever exiled from the city. And the man who taught me what it means to be a warlock. We found Sagira on Mercury, and at the same time, Vex's activity there surged exponentially. And you think Osiris might be involved? I need to know what happened, even if the Vanguard wants to forget him. When I lost my light, I didn't have anything else. I was empty. Then you came to Io, and you helped me find my way back. I need that friend again, Guardian. Go to Mercury. Take Sagira with you. The followers of Osiris, the few who remain, might know what her presence means. And for now, let's <sighs> I'd hate to have to throw you off this wall. Um, that was a joke, right? That was a joke. The followers of Osiris used to be so cool in Destiny 1. I mean, we only ever met one of them. Brother Vance. And we only meet one of them here. Brother Vance. But personally, I think this Brother Vance is a body double. Either that, or every follower of Osiris is called Brother Vance. And uh, we just happen to get the, uh, the joke of the entire cult. Truly, it's a, it's a shame what, a, what has happened to Brother Vance Travel between games. transformed Mercury into a garden world. It was a paradise. Until the Vex came. The Vex replaced the planet's core with their own machines. We call it the Infinite Forest. An ever-expanding labyrinth of realities. No two paths are ever the same. No one has ever escaped. It was Osiris's obsession. You know, it's funny that she says that no one has ever escaped because, um, well, we pretty much go in and out of the infinite forest to Mercury, a lot. Me, Just in this DLC, we, we go through it a lot. And every time you do one of the two strikes for this DLC, you go through it again. It's ridiculous. Curse of Osiris is looked down upon for many good reasons. Uh, a story that's not consistent with itself, disgraceful treatment of characters, an extremely small patrol zone, uh, where you can't even use your sparrow, an over-reliance on the infinite force is basically a giant loading hallway to get through missions and adventures. I don't think I'm going that way. Yeah, we go this way. So, uh, there is one good thing about the Curse of Osiris expansion, and that is, uh, there was a substantial grind with the Lost Prophecy weapons Brother Vance just mentioned. Uh, there was also the Raid Lair, which was excellent. You may also notice that I have gone ahead and unlocked my Night Stalker subclass. Didn't, didn't feel the need to record that. Seemed a little extraneous. If you want uh, if you want to look up the special story time, I know Ishtar Collective has transcripts of all that. What what does Ghost call it? Spooky story? Spooky scary time? Spooky story time? Spooky scary is like... That's, that's what a kid thinks Halloween is. Is it creepy story time? I don't remember. 
Maybe it's just weird story time. Can't remember every quote. Alright, there we go. Those enemies are dead. Okay, so, uh... It's been real weird around here lately. I, uh... Whoa. Went ahead and, uh... Helped my friends with Whisper of the Worm, which was, which was really cool, and, uh... I even helped some randoms with it this past weekend, which was just a phenomenal experience. You know, one of one of these guys was 370, and he didn't have a microphone, or at least he wasn't willing to use one. And uh, we got we got them through Whisper of the Worm, and the first time we attempted it, we lost. We needed maybe another three or four seconds. It was just one more whisper shot. Onto uh, onto the last boss, and we would have had it. We were so close, but we tried it again, and we got it. Uh, and I, I think for Whisper of the Worm, experience it is a huge help when it comes to tackling it. Am I just supposed to kill these guys? Am I okay? I'm I'm going forward. Cool. Love that symbol. But uh, Whis Whisper of the Worm, if it weren't for whatever weird random numbers game going on with Bungie servers that's causing the Taken event to spawn extremely infrequently after the first 12 hours the event is up. Um, man, if it weren't for that, this would be the golden age for Destiny 2. Right here. With Whisper of the Worm. Uh, I do plan on recording it. I've been busy trying to make my hunter ready to do things like raids. In fact, my hunter has already done one run of Leviathan, just to uh, just to get used to it. I do have some of the armor, which is nice. Oh, come on, we're like two shots off. There we go. Not even two shots, just one. Okay, let's probe the giant triangle. Well, that's not gonna let us in. Okay. Right, we gotta go back and we gotta tell Vance, hey, you gotta help us, buddy. I actually... Okay, so there's something that I do love about the story missions for Curse of, Curse of Osiris. And that's that you get to fight the, uh, the Descendant and the Precursor Vex. Which, both of them look so cool compared to the regular Vex. It's just nice to have that kind of variation. I actually think the Donut Heads look a little dumb. But, um... The Precursor Vex have an awesome, awesome design. Well, I mean, you know, they, they are normal Vex. They're just normal future Vex. Fidget Spinner Harpies. Yeah, you all remember that fad? That died out, like, a couple months ago now. I used to be a teacher, and uh, two years ago, when I taught middle school, you couldn't go a week without somebody trying to bring a fidget spinner out in class. It was, uh... I, I wouldn't say it was a nuisance. I mean, it was certainly preferable to them trying to be on their phones all the time when, you know, you were trying to get the students ready for, uh their exams at the end of the year, especially in middle school. I love Midnight Coup. Hey, face me so I can get the headshots and there we go. And you know what, the thing is, like, fidget spinners are actually, they're, they're entertaining to watch. They don't do a whole lot, but there's something kind of cool about watching them. What I never got was people saying, oh, it's a, it's a way for people to relieve autism or ADHD. And, you know, it's, well, here's the thing. It, they, they're called fidget spinners, but nothing about them helps with a, a need to fidget. You flick them once, and that's it. You just watch them. Every claim about them is complete BS. And, I, I mean, this has probably been said a whole bunch, you know. And I'm not saying anything new here. 
But it just, it seems strange to me that that was the way people were trying to advertise them, as, as some sort of way to help. Help those with autism, AT, ADHD, anxiety disorder, stuff like that. And that's, you know, that's kind of taking advantage of those people. You know, saying, oh, well, because, you know, people may have an issue, they, they need our toy. You know, and it clearly does not help in any regard to any of that. In return, the followers of Osiris can help you revive his ghost. We have a hidden temple on Earth. Take Sagira to these coordinates. Will do. Waking up Sagira is probably, oh, you know, in the top five things that happens in this DLC. Opening this window is another one. I love how you can see the Almighty out there. That is so cool. All right, let's go to Earth. We have a... Oh, won't let us access it until... Okay. Timer runs out. Then we can go. I am just... I am so excited for this Solstice of Heroes event. It's going to drop 400 power armor. We're going to be able to get uh, all kinds of... Oh, no, I don't want to track every moment. There we go. There's too much stuff in that little area. Should probably take care of it, but adventures aren't terribly entertaining. Maybe an invitation from the Emperor we can do on video, but it's not a huge deal. Anyway. So something that, that I've gotten into in the past year has been Warhammer 40k, and that is something that I, I have found to be a very relaxing hobby as well, and I, I wish Destiny would have, you know, some sort of tabletop... Wow, my frames are hit hard right now. EDZ is just ridiculous when it comes to the frames. Just how taxing it is. Alright. Anyways. Warhammer 40k is super cool. You get, to, you get to cut out these plastic miniatures from these sprues. You glue them together the way you want, and you get to paint them the way you want. And as I've been working on them, I've, I just, I would love it if Destiny had something like that. I love tabletop games. I love physical hobbies. You know, I love video games, clearly. Making videos about them. But, uh, you know, I, I think Destiny would be really cool as a skirmish game. You know, you take a fire team of guardians, you know, three to six guardians, depending on the size of game you want to play. And you just design them to be, you know, give this one Graviton Lance, you know, give this one, you know, it, they're kind of like mini action figures. Okay. Cool, you got a heavy pike. Then you give, you know, you give each one one exotic uh, gun, each one an exotic armor. Uh, you know, you paint them according to their... You don't have to paint them according to their subclass, but, you know, maybe give them some sort of super subclass accessory. I think that would be super cool. You know, that some... And hey, it'd, it'd give people a chance to experiment with shaders in a way that can't be done in game because you could actually have super black again you could have you know some sort of purple and green instead of I, I think the only like I don't even know if there is a purple and green the only purple I know of shader wise is are the Kala shaders you know and there, there used to be all kinds of like purple and gold shaders in in Destiny 1 there was a Jester Apo Apogee Jester Apogee, I think it was called. I could probably kill this tank faster with Darcy. Let's get rid of these vandals. Annoying. I absolutely love, though, the uh, the musical motif for Curse of Osiris, though. ba da da Ba -da 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 -da. Like just that little bit of Arabian Nights sort of 
musical intrigue is is so good dude this is taking forever to take down this walker but i i really just want to use the there we go there we go it's gone we can go through the gate hooray okay no there's only one way to go Oh yeah, I forgot these things drop mines when you... Ah, oh, I didn't realize that came back from Destiny 1. That's cool. I mean, it's also because, like, I never... Oh, <laughs> could have blown up right in my face. You don't get to use the heavy pikes. I don't think they even spawn on patrol. This might be one of, like, two missions where you can use them. It's ridiculous. How many cool things are there in Destiny that you only get to use once? You know... You only get to go to the Almighty once. You only get to uh, use one of these vehicles once. You know, you get you get a tank for one mission, and it has like a one percent chance to spawn in two strikes. You can get it in a call to arms, and I think you can get it in the inverted spire. Amanda Holiday will drop off a one of the. What are they called? Scorpio tanks? No, I'm thinking of the Scorpion from Halo. Whatever they are, she'll drop off one of the tanks. And uh, you get to use it for a good chunk of the mission, which is great. Absolutely cool. But it only happens, you know, once in a blue moon. It's not it's not something you can ever rely on. So when it happens, you're like, yeah! But when it doesn't happen, you know, it's like, eh, yeah, well, why did I hope? Yeah, the Fallen got here first, but that doesn't mean we aren't going to clear him out. This area in particular really reminds me of Destiny 1 design. Uh, particularly the Skywatch area mixed with uh, the Ishtar Collective area where you... For that one strike... Oh, God. Uh, was it the... It wasn't the Archon Tree strike. It was uh, the Nexus Mind, I think. Um, I'm stuck. Okay, I'm good. Navigating this tower is tough. Only for experienced players, guys. Do not attempt if you are a noob. My goodness. My goodness. So, there has been some really cool footage of new weapons coming out in Forsaken as well. There's a, a thorn-like gun called Malfessence. There's a bolt caster like sword called Oh god, what is it called? Uh It's not Dark Drinker. Ah, I can't remember the name of it. No scoped. All right, let's go. Well then. Too late. Man. The only the only follower of Osiris that lives is uh is the most annoying one. How did they have something just for this? This is heavily modified Vex tech. I've never seen anything like it before. How would they know they needed something to fit Sagira's go shell exactly? This this seems a little suspect to me. And now we have Sagira for our ghost. That actually looks really cool with that shell. It's the bursting wisdom shell. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's cool if you stay, you know. 
All right, well, that, that's going to wrap up this episode, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been First Prospect playing Destiny 2, and if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you got something to say, put a comment in the comments below. And finally, if you want to see more in the future, hit subscribe. This is First Prospect wishing you a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Signing off.